you, you think you have to have a nootropic, you have to have some kind of cool pill or some new bullshit diet, or, or you're mm -hmm. going to go all keto, or you're going to go whole 30. I mean, these are all fine things, right? But unnecessary in most cases. And that's what's, that's the thing I want everyone to understand is like, this is not some, some kind of dark art, right? This is not some witch doctoring stuff. This is just very simple, conclusively studied, highly efficacious science that anyone can practice in their daily lives and just stop overthinking it. That's just so simple once you just kind of get out of your own way. Welcome to the Clean Body Podcast. I'm Lauren Kelly, a certified nutrition therapist and soon to be specialized holistic cancer coach with a certification in cancer biology from UC Berkeley. I am so grateful that you're here. This podcast introduces you to the souls and brains behind some of the cleanest food, beverage, and lifestyle products on the market. Because what you put on, in, and around your body matters. From cookies, bread, and mushroom superfoods, to adaptogenic lozenges, clean medicines, organic mattresses, and fluoride-free toothpastes, we'll explore how the brands came to be, how scientific studies drove decisions about ingredients and materials, and most importantly, how the products support all the physical and mental microscopic miracles that occur in your body every minute of every day. Thank you for being here. Let's get this started. Welcome back to the Clean Body Podcast. I'm your host, Lauren Kelly. Probiotics are confusing, right? Like, do they do anything? Which ones are actually beneficial versus which are you just wasting your money on? I'm a holistic nutritionist and even I have a hard time going to the store and figuring out which probiotics I should buy sometimes. So today I am talking with Stefan Weitz from Jetson. Jetson creates a line of probiotics, but he is not just trying to sell his probiotics during this episode. Actually, Stefan's journey started with a diagnosis of multiple sclerosis, which attacks the tissues in your body and is a lifelong disease. After years of trying to get treatment to manage his conditions and taking a variety of big pharma medications, he went on his own wellness journey to heal his gut because gut health is so rooted in overall well-being, as well as managing symptoms of chronic conditions and diseases. So today during this episode, we dig into gut health. It's seriously like a crash course in everything you want to know about gut health. We probably spend 40 minutes just diving deep into every question you could have about leaky gut, what a good microbiome actually looks like, what signs and symptoms are of a poor gut, how gut health impacts skin in terms of acne, eczema, psoriasis, IBS, mental health, immune function, weight management, and allergies. And we talk about poop because, you know, poop and gut health go hand in hand. And we start defining what prebiotics, probiotics, postbiotics are, and how you can see through the bullshit that is often found in the probiotic and supplement industry. It's super informative. I am really excited to release this episode. I was geeking out over it as soon as I finished filming it. So if you like this episode, please rate, review, subscribe, share it with a friend. And I really appreciate you being here as always. So to continue our month-long theme of gut health, let's jump into it. Welcome to the podcast. How are you doing? I am. It's a Friday, which who knows when this is going to air, but today it's a Friday. <laughs> so uh, which all, all that means is I have fewer meetings tomorrow, but other than that, I'm great. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Saturdays, you need a day of rest and relaxation, I'm yeah. sure. No. <laughs> Crazy well, before times. we hop yeah. Um, before we hop into all things probiotics and gut health, which gut health is one of my favorite topics, I would love to have you share your story. I did sure. receive some of your story via email from your team, and it's one that's really rooted in a very firsthand experience with establishing health and realizing what optimal health really means. So I'd love to just hear it in your own words. Sure. Yeah, about, uh, gosh, now 15-ish years ago, I was in Hawaii with my my now ex-wife, uh, and we were hanging out, and I woke up, and I, I got out of bed, and I put my foot on the ground and realized my entire leg was numb. And I'm like, huh, 
my first thought, of course, and I couldn't feel any pain. I, I, I can take a fork and literally jab my leg with a fork and nothing. I had no pain. And my first thought, of course, was I'm becoming a superhero. I was pretty excited about that. <laughs> And, and then I uh, thought differently about it and thought, well, that probably isn't actually what's happening. So I called my, my buddy at Mass General and said, hey, this is what's happening. He goes, get in a plane now, go back to Seattle. Uh, I hear some docs to go see. So I did and pretty quickly established that I had MS, which is a bummer, but you know, life, life goes on. Uh, so great doctors in Seattle, probably the best in the nation for this, this particular disease and got me on really great drugs right out of the gate, super aggressive, hit it hard. All great. The challenge was I had side effects for you know seven years after that, just constant feeling like I had the flu and and uh, a real bummer. <laughs> and so, and I was traveling all over the world for my for work, and so I was on a plane all the time. And long story short, I was not getting worse, which was the, a blessing, but also felt like hell, which was the downside of that particular treatment modality. And somehow I was giving a speech at some conference back in, I think it was in Nantucket or I don't know where it was, but Mark Hyman was on the stage right before me, who's a pretty you know famous functional medicine doctor. And uh, and I talked, we were, he and I were chatting later at dinner or something. And I said, yeah, I've got this disease and yada, yada, yada. And he goes, oh, I can fix that. And I said, well, I'm not sure you can, but I'll, I'll come talk to you. So I flew out to his his, clinics and his clinic in Lenox, Massachusetts, and spent a couple of days with him and his whole team really getting tests run and you know, a couple hundred different tests. And they looked for heavy metals, they looked for phthalates, they looked for microbiome being out of alignment, blood work, urine work, poop work, you name it, it's all done on me. And after that, he sat down with all the results and said, look, this is the thing, a bunch of things that you should, you should change. You know, obviously, look at your household products, look at your personal care products, look at your cleaning products, those things, that were not great, get them out of your life. I want you to cut out gluten. I want you to cut out dairy because they saw some sensitivities with my body for those things. Cut out caffeine, cut out alcohol. That didn't last very long. Uh, and uh, uh, I mean, come on, let's be serious. I can't give up all my vices. Uh, and, and really did all those things. And then he said, look, one of the key challenges we're seeing is, is your microbiome is in complete dysbiosis. It's just out of whack. Even though I was, I was a healthy eater, I exercised, I did all the right things. I just didn't have the right composition of micro micro um, organisms sitting in my gut. And so that was the hard part. It was getting that, that thing right. But we did it. And within a few weeks, it was it was literally uh, uh, it was literally gone. <laughs> I mean, my, my pain was gone. I went from taking fit, fist fills of painkillers every single day to zero in about three weeks, which is a remarkable transformation from anybody's perspective. And and ever, ever, that was now almost eight years ago, over eight years ago now, I guess. And since then, I've the disease itself has stopped, no progression at all, the myelin's healing, so all these great things. So it really spoke to the power, which we we I've always kind of known implicitly, but it spoke to the power of looking at the the gut as the control center, really for the whole body, and really understanding systems biology and Dr. Lee Hood here in Seattle, who's so so smart in that area, understanding your body is not a bunch of discrete systems, which is how medicine is often taught. You have a cardiologist, you have a urologist, you have all podiatrists, all these things are are they're, they're taught in specialties. And the reality is our bodies are a, a highly tuned, highly interdisciplinary, highly cross-functional system that if 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 one piece is out of whack, it will affect things that that you wouldn't normally think could be affected. And that's, that was my case with, with the gut and the overall disease state that I had. So that's, that's my story. Well, it's a powerful story and one that I yeah. know personally many people who will resonate with because they're also currently dealing with MS. And it's funny mm -hmm. that your journey, you know, it started with an MS diagnosis, but it really started with Dr. Mark Hyman because I got yeah. started on this or I guess the the time that I decided I was going to start getting an education for holistic nutrition was listening to a podcast between Dr. Mark Hyman and Dr. Terry Walls, who oh, also sure. had MS, and her story yeah. of reversing. Uh, way bit more impressive than mine. <laughs> it's insane. <laughs> it's well, it's really, that truly point, amazing. But... You yeah. add, she, she's remarkable. Her, her Walls protocol I've now given to a bunch of folks who have um, uh, who have a much more aggressive version of the disease than I I have, and it is it is it's really remarkable uh, what they can accomplish with those with that protocol. I have to ask. So when Dr. Mark Hyman asked you to rid your life of certain mm -hmm. household and hygiene products that were creating, um, you know, unfavorable reactions mm -hmm. in your body. Yeah. 
what was your your reaction? Because I have found that when I suggest that to friends or clients that it, this could be a manifestation of toxins and chemicals that are in Absolutely. your home and getting into into your body and impacting your hormonal balance, your gut health. Absolutely. Sometimes I, Endocrine sometimes I get balance an eye roll. Crazy. Yeah. And, which is so funny. I mean, think about this. The largest organ we have is the thing that covers all of our guts, our skin, right? And it's so highly absorbed. And look, granted, it's a great barrier but it's also very absorptive in many, many ways. And so I, I'm not sure why it's so complex uh, or why it's so controversial to things like parabens are just universally, they're just bad and, and, there's, and they're unnecessary. That's, that's, that's what that was with me. Like I'm a science guy, I, I have backgrounds in science and I've always been into science. And so I, I, I read the research, I read all the PubMed reports every single week. I dig into this stuff extraordinarily deeply, but that was just an obvious one. Like it was just mm -hmm. such a, just cut it out. And, and it wasn't like it was a big sacrifice. Frankly, a lot of the products that once you get into better products, you realize that, oh, these work just as well. They actually smell better. Um, they're, they're, you don't have that cloying, gross smell of of Windex across the house or whatever the heck mm -hmm. it was back in the day. So <laughs> yeah, people who roll their eyes, I mean, look, it, we've been trained by media, by advertising, by our parents, by society to to, to equate certain smells and certain colors and certain uh, types of materials with being clean or, or being fresh. And, and we, part of it's just kind of unlearning all that learned behavior. And also, again, just really getting into the science and looking at the like endocrine disruption that a lot of these chemicals can have on people's bodies. And it's just a very well-established thing. And in the same way that we no longer, uh, you know, doctors don't recommend smoking anymore for relaxation or uh, <laughs> those sorts of things. Eventually, the, the modern, the, the kind of modern uh, storytelling will catch up with with the reality. Uh, and we're already seeing so many more clean products being put out there right now. And and oh, yeah. it's a, it's unfortunate that there is this this kind of because it, it's let's be true, let's be honest. Back in like the eighties, nineties, clean products did suck. Like they're not they were not very good products. They they were definitely functionally inferior to to products that were developed in the lab. I'm an investor in a company called Dirty Labs, which is an amazing company. They built an enzymatic uh, laundry detergent. It's just spectacular. It's completely clean. It's free of anything you, you would possibly uh, care about. And it's a whole, whole different way of cleaning. Uh, but, it, it, and I've, again, I've seen a lot of these things before, natural you know, laundry detergents, and most of them just don't work. And they actually went scientifically side by side against Tide and the big ones out there and did the exact same stains and everything else. And it was actually more effective than almost like nine out of 10 cases more effective than, than Tide at cleaning stains. So like science is progressing. This is all getting better. And so I, I wish folks would just would, would kind of evolve with science versus assume that bright blue equals clean. Yeah, we're very emotionally connected to our dollar store cleaning supplies. <laughs> Absolutely, you know. But mm -hmm. you you brought up the the look of it and the smell of it, and I have to say, artificial fragrances. All my listeners are probably exhausted of hearing me say this because they're one of my <laughs> biggest pet peeves. Like I oh, hate disgusting. artificial fragrance, disgusting. and. Once yeah. you start learning about them and, and you dig into the research, you will never be able to handle an artificial fragrance again. Like it will give you yep. a headache because you know what it's doing to your body and it's such crap. And so, yeah, that smell that we've been That's conditioned crap. to think is clean. Well, it's honestly, we're inhaling it through our lungs and it's just Absolutely. destroying our body. And I can't believe I that know. it's not banned in the United States yet. <laughs> I, it, it will not be for a long time, but we know. have to simply make the markets actually reject it. That's the best way. Government banning is not going to work. People have to just reject it as a product and that'll, that'll drive change. Yep. Vote with your wallet. Okay. That's so right. Such a tangent, but such a great tangent no that we just had yeah. on. Uh, so during your experience with modern medicine and MS, you know, so often a lot of the medications that were given and protocols were told to follow were really masking the symptom, not finding the root yeah. cause and healing the root exactly. cause. So what are some things that you learned about big pharma and modern medicine, which is still needed in our world today? Absolutely. I'm not saying get rid of modern medicine. Absolutely. There's a time and nope. a place. But what are some things that you learned firsthand throughout your journey? Well, I, the, 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 I think the most uh, striking piece, and I'm sure a lot of your listeners will, will, under, will have heard this or will agree with this, is that in many, many cases, modern medicine doesn't know why things work the way they work. 
you saw a lot of the disease, mo disease modifying drugs for MS, for example, the method of action is actually quite unclear. They actually don't know why these things work. And so, I mean, you again, look at the studies and you read the research reports and these things, you can see what they're doing. Like if for, in the case of MS, they're actually wiping out a lot of your, your white blood cells, which are your, you know, the, the ones that go attack invaders because your, your immune system is overactive and it's attacking the myelin sheath around the nerves. Uh, and that's what's actually causing the, the degradation of, of one's life. So, so that's that's the that's what MS does, and so the, the kind of response is this sledgehammer of let's just kill the white blood cells, let's just knock them out <laughs> and make them less aggressive. Great idea. Right? There are fewer <laughs> of them, which you know it makes it makes sense. Uh, but but that's that's kind of as far as it gets. Like the, the the kind of why the white blood cells attacking? Why is the immune system in a weird state? Why is it hyper vigilant? That's mm -hmm. the whys don't get answered. So mm -hmm. the modern medicine is again, I, I, I would never. Uh, look back in my time and say, I'm sorry that I did what I did because it, it literally the first seven years when I was taking extremely aggressive drugs, it absolutely stopped the disease from progressing. They had a lot of negative side effects, but it stopped the disease from progressing. So that's unquestionably a good thing. Uh, but it is striking just how little doctors, you know, and I, the best doctors probably in the world uh, looking at me, it is striking how little we as a, com as a communal uh, body of, of people know about how the drugs do what they do. They just can look at the correlation and say, well, you know, in, in a clinical study, 10,000 folks took it, 8,000 folks got better. I guess it works. You know, mm -hmm. uh, that, that was kind of the, the most people think of medicine and drugs as being so specific and scientific. And that's just not the reality in most cases. So what were some things then that you learned about the intersection between your environmental factors in your lifestyle and the onset of chronic conditions, whether through first experience or just, you know, you are deeply knowledgeable and you've done your research. So scientific yeah. studies that you've been exposed to through the years. Well, I mean, I think that the first thing to remember and just to recognize is, uh, again, that systems biology mindset, like really understanding that, gosh, if I if, if my body has some sensitivity towards particular products, whether it's a dairy or whether it's gluten, everyone wants to look at gluten. As we all know, the reality is gluten is not actually a, a massive thing for majority of people, but it, 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 as far as like a, a chronic condition, but it can cause sensitivity. And there are sensitivities for gluten in people. And so what we really learned is, for me at least, is like looking at that inflammatory state of the body. And again, this is like whole body inflammation is one of those things where a lot of folks talk about it. The science is not super clear in this, but we have a pretty good idea of what's going on, especially as it relates to the, to, to the gut lining and gut health and that layer of cells that really cover the inside of, of the gut. Um, when that is compromised and you are getting things that are meant to be contained in this in this gut right here, in your, in your stomach, frankly, which is a, just a soup of toxic crap. Like, you know, depending on what you're eating, of course, uh, that is that is designed to hold things and keep them from getting outside of, of your gut and of your stomach into the broader organs of your body. And when that lining is compromised, which is really like a two cell thick lining, when it's compromised, the, 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 the fact is things are escaping into your bloodstream, which shouldn't be there. So there's a real reason why the immune system is on hyper alert because it's like this is not right something's wrong and when mm -hmm. you have that kind of chronic march of these of these guys and gals running across your body to counteract that uh that's what that's what causes this that that's partially what can cause this thing is is that kind of hyper vigilance that that's exacerbated by uh your gut and not being in shape and also by products that you're using that, that simply aren't uh, aren't what they should be and so that's when you start to realize gosh for me at least the, the recognition that getting back to much, not, not basics, basics is the wrong word, but being much more vigilant about what you surround yourself with, what you put in your body, what you put on your body. Uh, it's just, it's so commonsensical. Like our bodies are evolving at a fairly slow rate. Like evolution is a slow process. And if you look at a hundred years ago, a lot of the chemicals that we use in food production or in household production, they didn't exist. And or are our bodies eventually going to be able to metabolize these things and do something with them? Maybe, but it's not going to be for tens of thousands of years. That's why evolution mm -hmm. works. And so to think that it, getting and back by then to we might just all be by then we might just all be infertile since that's the direction we're going. <laughs> or, or or living in a simulation, right? Now, that's probably yeah. a realistic scenario. <laughs> uh, so that's that's what kind of got me mostly. It's just like looking at the fact that science in almost every 
sense of, of, of or in every, every part of our, our lives has raced so far ahead of, of biology and will continue to do so just because of the way evolution or the biology works, that we have to be more careful about what we do with them with and to ourselves. And that's really kind of what got me, uh, that was the kind of the aha for me is it's not our fault per se, but we can do something about it. Yeah. Perfect. So this is a great transition to talk about gut health then, which like yeah. I said, is one of my favorite topics. And uh, there's so many layers. Love gut health? I know. Yeah, exactly. And poop. I love talking about yeah. poop. I have no <laughs> problems talking about it. But um, there's just so many layers to everything you just said because, you know, gluten, people often don't realize that there's you're eating a piece of bread. There's so much other stuff in that piece of bread that you're eating. Oh, also, yeah. the wheat that we are the growing wheat. and consuming yeah. conventionally is completely different than it was 100 yeah. years ago and has, I want to say, like – seven times more gluten or maybe more than that than the yeah, original, absolutely. you know, wheat crop that we were growing. And then there's also when we consume gluten, we have an uptick in a protein called zonulin, which that's what right, really exactly. breaks our gut, mm -hmm. our gut apart. So for people who are just starting to enter this realm and they don't completely understand gut health yet, what is the most approachable way or the most important things you think people need to know about gut health? Well, first of all, uh, that's a great question. The most important things people need to know. It, it, they're not, I guess the first thing is not one size fits all, but there are a few things that you can do that are kind of universally universally great. So um, the first thing is people are, are under hydrated in this country, almost universally. So if you think about the amount of water you're drinking, not sodas, which of course are just the devil incarnate, not mm -hmm. diet sodas, even worse than actual. I mean, like if you're drinking soda, at least drink Mexican Coke because it uses real sugar. You're better off doing that than drinking a U.S. Coke. Uh, but don't drink Coke, period. It's just terrible for you. Uh, <laughs> but basically, but, but water is one of those things that we just do not drink enough of in this country. And water is is truly the thing that that can help to balance the gut and balance, frankly, your overall systems because you can you can flush toxins out that way. If you're not drinking enough water, there's nothing to flush it out. And so you really need to be drinking that so incredibly so incredibly aggressively. I mean I, I go through probably probably two more actually, but you know at least a gallon a day of water. I'll just during the day. It's just I have a, my clear, you know, uh, glass bottles here. I have a filter over there and I can just sit here all day and just chug it and then think about it. It's just natural. So that's that's a big one. That really helps the gut being in good shape. Second thing is just focusing on those those dark leafy greens that allow you to that allow your body to gra grab the great phytonutrients that you need, all the great vitamins that you can't get enough of through supplements or you can, but they aren't as bioavailable, like really focusing on those kind of dark leafy greens. We just do not eat enough of those things in this country uh, as a matter of practice. And along with that comes that need for fiber. And I know people, you, you've seen Metamucil ads if you're older or your parents, maybe your grandparents, then have the thing of Metamucil in the cupboard. Like that's just so utterly unnecessary. And again, not overly good for you. It's one type of fiber, designed for one thing. What you need fiber for is to feed the good bacteria in your gut. That's so important to create those short, short chain fatty acids, all the things that actually are so critical to ongoing health. And most folks just don't get enough. We need 25 to 30 grams of fiber a day. Most Americans get less than seven. So mm -hmm. it's one of those things where you have to be thoughtful about it. In fact, even this thing here, this is a, this is a great, this is a plot thing of Vega, which I love. It's a great little product actually. Um, but this is this one little bottle, which is 170 calories, uh, very low, seven grams of sugar, so which is a nice, you know, it's a low kind of low sugar threshold as well, but four grams of fiber and one, one drink and 20 grams of protein, it's a really highly efficacious way. If you're in a rush, like I was this morning to get to kind of, to, to do, do a fiber bomb, protein bomb, uh, five nutrient bomb, all in one thing, but that's just important. And then the, 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 the less obvious things is what's the gut health are sleep. Sleep and exercise are two things that people just don't, again, take seriously enough. People would rather watch a Game of Thrones marathon than go to bed at a reasonable hour. And look, I get it. Dragons are cool. I do too. I love binge watching. Right? It's hard. Right? It's hard. To it's hard, to but out. you gotta do it. I mean, you people underestimate even even the so people underestimate. This is what's crazy. If you are if you are moderately dehydrated, you can have like a twelve to fifteen percent reduction in executive functioning mentally. Like you can literally become dumber in within a day because you're dehydrated. That's crazy, right? What what people spend thousands of dollars on supplements on, on nootropics and all these crazy brain hacks, 
to kind of gain that function. The reality is, if you just drink more of this, you'll likely be in pretty in good shape. Same with skin. Same thing. So my point is, we we as a species, or as a, as a kind of a community, have become so reliant on supplementation versus mm -hmm. to, to to offset the things that we could just do naturally and simply uh, that, that 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 would obviate the need for these things. So anyway, back to gut health. So hydration, greens, sleep, and exercise. Those are the four things you can do uh, that really anyone can do right uh out of the gate uh to radically increase the quality of, of of your gut and we already kind of mentioned why it's so important but that's those are the four things practical things you can go do uh to make it better and exercise is one of those things where everyone again rolls their eyes and groans i'm sure just like your cleaning products like oh, i'm too busy mm -hmm. i can't do it bullshit like there's that is just complete and utter bs i mean not everyone can afford it's Peloton. so totally foundational or it's so mm -hmm. foundational that people are just like, that can't be the root cause of my issues, that that's I'm not drinking problem. enough water or I'm not sleeping. That, that's what's so crazy is people, you're exactly right. It seems too easy. It mm -hmm. seems too obvious. Mm -hmm. It's like, well, there's no, there's no way that clean, clear, stupid, free water can be a solve of half my issues. There's no way that sleeping eight hours of sleep every single night could make me more alert, more powerful, better decision maker, happier it just doesn't make any sense we, just, we, we can't accept something you, you, you have to have a new tropic you have to have some kind of cool pill or some new bullshit diet where you're, mm -hmm. you're gonna go all keto or you're gonna go whole third these are all fine things right but unnecessary in most cases and that's what's that's the thing i want everyone to understand is like this is not some some kind of dark art right this is not some witch doctoring stuff this is just very simple conclusively studied highly efficacious science that anyone can practice in their daily lives and just stop overthinking it. That's just so simple once you just kind of get out of your own way. Yeah. You said something there about clear, clean water, which yeah. there's actually a big difference between the clear, clean waters that we have access to. So I'd love to there hear is. your point of view on that, especially associated with gut health. Yeah, well, first off, I mean, you should never drink water out of a plastic bottle. I mean, I think, I think everyone knows that it's it's destroying the planet. We all know that, obviously. There are literally, I think, half a trillion bottles every year that end up in landfills and oceans. I mean, it's, there's a, an island the size of Portugal sitting out there in the Atlantic right now. It's not quite that big, but it's huge, right, <laughs> of, just, of just plastic floating out there. And, and the microplastics that are present in all these plastic water bottles are really damaging. In fact, there's a study, it was... I would say decently done, not not perfectly done, but not too long ago, it's basically every week you're eating the equivalent of two credit cards worth of plastic because of mm -hmm. all the stuff we eat in our food and our waters. So uh, plastic water bottles, the devil, don't eat them, don't drink out of them. They're just, unless, you just, unless you're literally dying of thirst, like just avoid that. Secondly is you, you look at our, our, our meaning water supplies in many places where we live. I live in Seattle most of the time, which is a good water, like really good water supply. But I have a tester in my house. It's a parts per million tester of dissolved solids. I have this little tiny electronic gadget. And I can put it in my water in Seattle. And I get 27 ppm of dissolved solids, which is actually pretty high. Not bad, but like a, below 50 is pretty good. But still, it's way more than I want it to be. And so uh, I have a filter. I have a water filter here in the house that... Um, literally it's, it's it's a zero ppm filter so i can dump it in there it's this ridiculously large device but it does take my water from the tap and create literally zero ppm water uh, out, of the, out, out of the other side which i can actually look at with this tool i have so uh, focusing on on the quality of the water you drink is indeed very important i'm just curious how much water do you drink and how many hours of sleep do you get on average, I like I say, I drink about a gallon a day. I'd say of water if I'm, if I'm, and it's not something I like even think about. Once you get into it, you just don't even. It just becomes you become thirsty. I, I drink when I'm thirsty, and and when you train your body to consume that kind of water, and you're peeing every 45 minutes, and maybe a little too much, <laughs> uh, but but your body's like it, it needs it. So I'm probably about a gallon a day, and then sleep. I I'm generally. I'm going to say between seven and eight is my, my sweet spot. I'm usually like 10, 30 a.m. to 5, or 10, 30 p.m. to 5, 30 a.m. is like my lowest. That's like seven hours. And if I'm really good, I'll do like 10 to, to 5, 30. But maybe I get eight in the weekends, but between seven and eight. Yeah, if I get less than seven, 
I wouldn't say no, I'm grumpy, but I've got some serious gr- brain fog. I'm just not firing on all cylinders. <laughs> no, you can't be. Like your body uses that time for so many functions, whether it's tox- detoxification, whether it's uh, getting rid of or organizing your short-term, long-term memory, uh, just allowing you to actually get into a deep REM sleep. Like it just, there's no, like, there's just no universe where you, that 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 uh, a lack of sleep does not have dramatically negative consequences in your body. Well, and it's really important for healing as well. And so when we're talking about gut and leaky gut and a poor poor gut health and you want to improve that, proper sleep is so important to be able to do that. One thing that is just killing our gut health in America especially is antibiotics, which we like to give out like candy. Um, So what are some things, what's information you can share about antibiotics and the impacts it has on gut health? Yeah, I mean, you're absolutely right. We have three hours for this. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) And and again, let's not forget, there are, there's absolutely time and place for antibiotics. They are, they are remarkable and they are necessary and they have to be used in some cases. But to your point, we give them out for people who have colds or or who have viral infections. I'm like, why are you taking this for a viral infection? That's that's zero, zero, zero impact. It's like taking an antibiotic for COVID. It's not going to happen, right? Nothing's going to happen. So when you take an antibiotic, it's kind of like a neutron bomb in, 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 in nuclear theory, where it, it just, it, it will definitely kill the bad bacteria, but it will destroy all bacteria. Most antibiotics are fairly indiscriminate. There are two ones that are interesting, but even they will take out the good bacteria as well. The challenge is you take an antibiotic, it will indeed, in many cases, take care of the, the problem for you. But like I say, it will destroy your gut microbiome. It'll be destroyed, it's gone. It's almost virgin, it's a mess. And I've, I've seen folks, especially women, who take antibiotics, who end up with UTIs or other types of infections in that in that area that persist for months and years. And mm-hmm. so it, you have to be really, my, my wife, God bless her, she's a, you know, she's way crunchier than I am. I mean, she will be in abject pain before, she, she has to be on the verge of losing her mind before she'll touch an antibiotic because she knows that, and she's had the situations where she's taken them and it's been a real challenge to get back into the shape uh, as far as your microbiome is concerned and with all the impacts there. So look, my thing is if you have to take them, take them because they are, they're there for a reason, but be aware of what you're doing. Like you're gonna have, you're gonna spend months and months and months rebuilding that microbiome. And there have been studies actually show even six months post introduction of antibiotic, the microbiome is still far less diverse than it was pre the antibiotic introduction. So it's a, it's a challenge. Like be judicious. Yeah, and it is tough. And I don't want to scare people out there listening to not take them because, no. like you said, it is no. necessary. About you know five months ago, I got a really bad infection, and I was doing homeopathic mes- methods, and everything seemed to be fine, and it seemed to be going away and being treated. And all of a sudden, I was on my couch in like the worst pain. I could feel yeah. something like in my kidney, and I yeah. was like, "Oh shit, this is not good. This yep. is not good." No. And my husband no. kept saying, "I'll drive you. I'll drive you to urgent care." And I was like, "No." No, they're just going to give me antibiotics. Antibiotics, I, I know. Go. But mm. at the end of the day, you know, the impacts of me not taking antibiotics with a kidney infection were much greater yeah. because that bacteria yeah. could have yeah. gotten in my bloodstream. And then we're talking yep. oh, huge problems. And, yep, exactly. Yeah. So it's like sometimes you got to do what you got to do. But when you do have to take antibiotics, what are your suggestions from bouncing back? And it is kind of a journey. You have to be mindful for a while. Um, but what kind of steps would you tell your wife or me for after you yeah. have to take antibiotics to bounce back? Well, not not to be a plug, but but we actually, for this exact scenario, built a product at Jetson. It's, it's called Gut Recovery. It's, and it's designed literally to do, to, to help with that. It's a two-week regimen. As you actually take them as you're taking the, the antibiotic. So you take your anti in the morning, and you take gut recovery a few hours after you take the, anti- the antibiotic. And it is designed with these extreme, three different types of strains uh, that are designed to be antibiotic resistant, but also good colonizers of the gut. So that's one thing. Take You can take jets and gut recovery. People I know uh, do take and have taken it and are blown away. Literally, it's rebuilt their gut in a, ma- a matter of a few weeks, which um, is even better than I thought it would work after looking at the science. That's one thing. The second thing is kind of get, getting back to standard gut hygiene. So it really is focusing on the things that will create uh, a, a, a favorable condition to help the good bacteria grow. Part of the problem is when you, the, the, your, your gut has the usual suspects. It's got a bunch of bifida, a bunch of lacta, all those things that are in there that are the, the good guys and gals. And you've got a bunch of stuff that just naturally exists, which is negative. Your E. coli, your seminoles, all these things that are still 
E. coli itself isn't actually a negative bacteria, but it, it, it presents, uh, depending on how it's being uh, nurtured, it can, it can be a very negative, obviously, for many reasons. And so the challenge in many cases is that those, the bad guys and gals, the ones that actually are more, are more colonizers, are the ones that can be actually more virulent, not virulent, the wrong word, but they can be, they can be more aggressive as it relates to, to, to multiplying and doubling and tripling and, and exponentially growing. And so what you really are trying to do when you have to take an antibiotic is making sure the conditions in your gut are such that the, at the, the bad folks don't become so much more voluminous than, than the good folks. And so tr that's just kind of back to standard gut hygiene, lots of leafy greens, lots of fiber, lots of water, focusing on the things that don't disrupt it, avoid any kind of artificial sweeteners. Those are, those are a death knell for, for, for proper mm -hmm. gut health, avoid processed food, avoid cured meats, avoid, I mean, there's just the stuff that we, again, what's so, what's so frustrating about this whole space is that in many cases, all things I'm saying are so utterly obvious. They sound so, so simple. And, and it's hard for folks to believe any of this is going to work because it is just so, so, so simple. But that's the truth. Like it's your body is really good in most cases if you just leave it the hell alone. Mm -hmm. That's the reality. Now, we, there are conditions where things go wrong and transcription errors occur. And that's where you get cancers and everything else. But Realistically, if, if if all things being equal, the body is a remarkably tuned organism that knows what it's doing. We just keep fucking it up. I'm sorry, I keep messing it up. No, please, there's, <laughs> you do not have to censor yourself here. I totally agree. And but you, you even brought up cancer, and you know, there's so much science also to suggest that so many of these chronic conditions that we are experiencing today are rooted in gut health because gut health. Yeah is a precursor to bodily inflammation. Oh my gosh. And inflammation absolutely. throws everything off. I often call it bacon bits in your blood because if you yeah, your gut lining right. is yep. compromised, you are having Forest. bacteria. You're having yep. that yep, that um, chewed food essentially fall yep. into your bloodstream and create this um, immune overactivity and absolutely. these yeah, allergic responses essentially. Um, Absolutely. but before we get into probiotics, which I want to dig deep into, because it is a very confusing space. Supplements can yeah. be very hard to navigate. I do have just two more questions about the gut sure. because you just know everything about gut health. Oh boy, that's, that's far. That's absolutely not true. Though. <laughs> so, um, one of my second to last questions about gut health, which I'm sure it's not even going to be my last question, but, um, what are some signs that you would say people can pay attention to that perhaps they are suffering from leaky gut or compromised gut? Well, I mean, first off is, is uh, uh, look for signs of chronic inflammation. So like figure out what, and, and th that thing can be an anywhere from joint pain all the way through uh, bloating, all the way through, uh, uh, again, th here's the thing, <laughs> again, not to be so reductionist, but it affects everything. So mm -hmm. literally depression, brain fog, cognition, that's actually a sign of, of an out of balance gut health and, and to an extent leaky gut. Uh, but again, chronic overall body pain. Like you, here's the thing, you should wake up in the morning and think, God, this hurts to get out of bed. That's not normal. That's not normal. Like, that your body isn't designed to hurt when you wake up in the morning after eight hours of sleep. So those sorts of things are really important. Uh, being, th looking at your, at your stool, obviously, like looking at kind of what comes out of you when you go number two, like, is it, a, if you look at the Bristol stool, Bristol scale, for example, to go on, go and go online and search for this, but the Bristol B R I S T O L scale will show you kind of what your feces should look like. And it sounds weird, but, but go check it out. Right. Cause that's actually really important to kind of see how it, how it is it well formed. Is it, is it not, is it hard? All sorts of things that your listeners can go in and check out, but that's, that's, that's an interesting one too. But then, then, and then if you're chronically getting sick, and, and it and your sickness lasts longer than a normal sickness should. There's probably a sign that it's probably a sign that your body actually is is fatigued. Like you have, um, you have you, your body can actually become fatigued for chronically fighting these things, which is why we're getting a lot of these conditions. So uh, those are all good symptoms of, of wow. You you should be you should be looking at what you can do to actually improve the quality of your gut for sure. Yeah, my last question was going to be about the gut connection with 
uh, every everything um everything because i think my friends and family are probably so sick of me you know they text me and they say <laughs> they're having terrible acne or they're yes, yes, having a lot yes. of anxiety or whatever and i'm always like mm, we should talk about your gut health yes, <laughs> they're like it can't guess always what? be gut health Lauren. and i'm like yes it is always guess good. what it actually is that's so true yeah. we so we built we built a product this year called skin at a jetson um which was designed for that so we we what we do at jetson we we look at the most recent science that comes out, we look at what ailments are, are plaguing the population, and we take kind of a systemic, holistic approach at addressing these things. So one of the things we saw a lot of, especially recently, and I have a daughter who's uh, 16, and you know she's a teenager, so her glands are overactive, and oil pops up when it shouldn't be there, and so that's part of it's just puberty, and that's the way it's going to go. And she thankfully has has not a lot not a lot of challenges. But I was talking to her, talking to her friends, and then looking at the science. And again, to your point like eczema, psoriasis, adult onset acne, all these things in, in many cases are caused by, guess what? And dysbiotic or out of balance gut. So we built a product called Jets in the Skin, which is designed to actually ameliorate those conditions. And actually not just, not just cover them up to your point, but to systemically alter the microbiome to where we can stop those things from occurring. And so I built it, very excited about it, but you know, you, you, until you can get into a broad distribution, you don't know if it's gonna work. And uh, one of the people on our team named Sarah, she doesn't mind me telling you the story because she did an ad for us actually, but you know, she's had chronic psoriasis for years on her legs and her arms. And she was hated to go outside in shorts because it was just so, so bad. And I'm not bullshitting you. And I, I asked her like four times, are you sure you did nothing else? But she started taking one of her early prototypes of skin. Uh, gosh, now it would have been a few months ago. And within, again, a few, I call it, I think it was like five weeks or so, it was all gone. All of it was gone. And she's been putting steroids on her, topicals, everything for for literally, she's like in her late 20s, maybe mid 20s, I guess, for years. And within a few, almost a month, I guess, your skin only tran kind of turns over every single month. So it can't happen overnight, obviously. But gone. I just saw her last week in Chicago. And I said, Sarah, like, is it still working? She said, yep, I'm outside every, outside the sun psoriasis free, eczema, sorry, eczema free. So to your point, like that's, that's what's so exciting about probiotics right now in the space and the gut health in general is that the, it, 25 years ago, there were nine studies done on the kind of connection of gut to overall larger disease states. Uh, this year, there'll be 4,000. So the interest and the science and the academic research going on to understand the impact of gut health on these chronic conditions, which we assumed had nothing to do with, with the gut, is astounding. So as you mentioned, depression, mental health, cognitive mm -hmm. function, skin, hair, uh, uh, immune response, um, uh, even, even just looking at things like allergic responses, you know, seasonal rhinitis or the, the pollen comes out, all these things have a direct and very tight connection to the particular bacterial composition of a microbiome. And that's what we have to get everyone to understand. Yeah. There's a great book. I was trying to think of it while you were speaking. I can't think of the title right now, but it goes even deeper into this conversation and the connection between gut health and not only depression and anxiety and acne or eczema, but also schizophrenia or autism yeah. or ADHD, oh, yeah. anything that yeah. has to do with cognitive health because the gut brain connection is so strong. So strong. It's actually called, so funny, it's called the vagus nerve, right? That's V-A-G-S, mm -hmm. uh, which everyone thinks I'm making up, but I'm not. Not. That's actually what it's called, uh, but that, that is a thing that actually it, it, it's the guts called the second brain for a reason. There's a reason, like when you get nervous, I your, your, your gut brain. feels weird. It, that's I even better. I'll take that. Worms, I'll take that. worms the, don't the have brains. Brain. Yeah, worms don't that's have true. brains. They only have guts, that's true. That's true. and so that's true. you know. <laughs> and, and, and look at them. They've done so much for society. Wait, hold on. But uh, <laughs> but 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 there, there, there's a reason when you when you get nervous in your brain, you feel it in your stomach or in your gut. Like mm -hmm. that, it's literally there's this connection. And so uh, the book that maybe you're thinking of, it's a great book named uh, Doc, Dr. Julia Enders wrote. It's uh, called yep. Gut, which I encourage all of your people to read. And then Emron Meyer uh, as well, another guy, very, very good doctor who's written extensively on the gut brain connection. Um, I'm looking at my wall because it should be up there, but it's not up there. Your, your book? The book yeah. you're thinking of? Yeah. Like Dr. Emron Meyer. Oh, interesting. Yeah, he, mm -hmm. he wrote one called The Mind-Gut Connection, which is quite good. 
Uh, then he has a gut immune connection. Then he has one called functional pain syndrome as well, which anyway, he's, he's a phenomenal uh, doc that has been studying this for years and years and years and years and years. So highly recommend those books. Oh, I love the gut. It's just so complex. So sexy, right? So I just simple. wish it was, I just wish it was sexier. The problem is like everyone looks at the other organs just seem so much cooler. Like the heart seems cooler, the brain seems, no and the gut isn't really, it, well, I'm just saying people, that's how, I mean, the heart just seems magical, right? And it is magical. And so it's the brain, but like, and, and the gut, frankly, it's not just a thing. There's actually lots of parts of it, right? And so mm -hmm. even, even the gut, calling it the gut's kind of a misnomer because there's actually many, many parts of, of the, of the mm -hmm. system. But um, I mean, no one's thinking that, no one wants to think about intestines. Intestines aren't cool. I like so. to think of like the colony that's living in there. They're like my little dudes that cool. are always with me and I need to feed them I good food so they're happy. I freak out. Like there, there are definitely, so I'm, I'm a clean eater, don't get me wrong, but there are definitely times after a long week or a long month or whatever, like I say once a quarter, like I go on a bender and I'll do like a, <laughs> I'll do a solid, amazing cheeseburger. And I'm like, mm -hmm. you know what? I'm going to regret this, but I'm going after it. Uh, or I'll eat a piece of pizza. And just, oh, I'm just, I do miss pizza a lot, I must say. Um, but but my body, I, I, I'm conscious of it. Mm -hmm. I'm saying, okay, I know I'm doing this right now. And it's not the right thing to do. But also, as I talked to Mark back in the day, he said, Stefan, if you're 90% good and 10% bad, that's great. And I'm like 98% mm -hmm. good and 2% bad. So I think I'm doing okay. You're better but than me. I usually... I usually tell people 80-20. I feel like that's a bit yeah. more accessible for the general public. And I, I eat agree. pizza once a week. Pizza is my favorite oh, thing. Oh, God. <laughs> I so wish I could eat pizza once a week. I just don't. <laughs> I don't. I, did, I, had, I had some yesterday, actually. I had a um, – Daya has a new pizza out. It's vegan, dairy-free, and gluten-free. Uh, mm. And it was shockingly – it's a pepperoni pizza. And shockingly, not bad. Hmm. I'll have to look bad. at that. I'm kind of yeah. curious about what fillers and preservatives they might have. In yeah, yeah, I didn't. Uh, well, dye is <laughs> dye is dye is pretty clean, but uh, but anyway, uh, there you go. It, it wasn't. I wouldn't recommend it like every day, but I, we were, we just moved houses, and so the movers were all unpacking stuff, and I couldn't run out and get lunch. And I'm like, okay, all I have in the fridge is this frozen pizza from Daya. So there you go. Well, I mean, such a big part of having a good relationship with food is also not completely restricting yourself from the. Hundred percent agree. Hundred percent agree, because that's the fastest way to fail. Yeah. If, if you're if you're that if you're that vigilant about it and, and you can actually develop eating disorders just based on that you know mm -hmm. we were really Fear. careful my daughter especially exactly we my daughter's been since she was a little kid we watched uh fed up which is a great documentary that laurie david did years ago about the sugar the sugar industry and how dangerous it is and i think elena was probably I mean, nine at the time so you know fairly young and so she watched this with me where some friday night you know rager at the, at the white's house uh and we were watching this this movie and to that day she she will still look at the back of anything anything with a label on it which thankfully we don't don't have much in the house but she'll look at it and go wow dad that's got six grams of sugar and five of it's added i'm touching that i bought her she loves coconut water so i got her some coconut water and i didn't i didn't look at the label very carefully it was harmless harvest you think it's great it's not it's like 26 mm -hmm. grams of sugar which, and there's no bound fiber. And so of course it just goes right through you. Boom, pancreas goes crazy. Insulin starts going crazy, right? And just get that massive sugar high. So I, I bring it home and I have it in the fridge and, and she's like, dad, what, what are you doing? I'm like, honey, I'm sorry. I wasn't looking. I, I was in a rush. I grabbed you some, it was pink. It was pretty. So anyway, my point is like, it's, it's, uh, it, it's very, it's just so important to, to look at that. A food scientist in training or nutritionist or something over she, there. It, I don't know. She's definitely going into medicine. That is her passion. She's she's definitely medicine. Well, I I have a lot of friends who have children and they struggle with finding that fine line between allowing your kids to be kids and right, eat crap kid. from time yeah. to time and also be healthy. Yeah. Any tips there before I swear we go into probiotics? Okay. <laughs> um, I will just say part of it is education and part of it honestly is, is, is showing them that not all food that is good for you tastes like crap. So that's part of like, there's things like Benitos, like Benitos are an insanely good tortilla chip. They're made out of black beans, right? And you can even get nacho cheese flavor, which are actually, again, not actually cheese, but like they're objectively delicious chips. They're just, they're just delicious. And so our, our challenge for the years has, has been just to focus on finding um, great products that both taste good and are whole and natural uh, that she doesn't really miss crap. Like I don't, mm -hmm. I, I would doubt, I, I would doubt she's ever eaten a Dorito, not because I said you can't, 
just because she's like, why food A shouldn't be bright orange unless it's an orange. And, and B, like I can look at the ingredient, there's like blue dye in here. Like, why would <sighs> it doesn't make any sense? And like yeah. and, the, and the bonitos are frankly just delicious, if not more delicious. And they're actually got fiber and and vitamins, like better for you. They're black beans, like they're so good for you. So I think that's the thing. It's like Part of it's on on parents. I mean, and look, not everyone has the luxury of being able to afford these products either. So we have to be very careful. We don't get too uh, too too down that that rabbit hole. But if you have the means uh, to buy better quality food that does taste good, your kids will do it. And if you don't, then focus on buying whole food, not processed mm-hmm. food. Uh, again, it's within I, it's all a very privileged space from which I speak. So mm-hmm. I'm very cognizant of my privilege. But but if you can, uh, and even if even if you are less able to do so buying just higher quality whole food will always be the winner for for kids yeah well luckily i know of a podcast that features a lot of better for you brands so yeah, nice <laughs> I think, all right i think we're on it right now i, th- I think um, we have it all right so thank you for all of that it was sure. super i feel like we just got a crash course in gut health which is exactly oh, what i wanted yeah. but now <laughs> it's time to do the same thing for probiotics so what exactly sure. is a probiotic Let's start basic. Uh, well, that's it. We'll, we'll, we'll keep this, we'll keep this really, really, really simple. A, a probiotic simply is, uh, well, it's just bacteria in, in your gut, right? It's good bacteria in your gut is what it comes down to. And so um, they are microorganisms that, that synthesize uh, and, and synthesize nutrients and food and, and, and help your gut kind of actually make, do what it's supposed to do. So that's, that's, that's simple. They're, just, they're living microorganisms that live in your gut naturally. And you can supplement them as well through things like probiotic supplements. So when you say synthesize nutrients, what is the output of that? Why is that so important? Well, it depends. You can create things like butyrates or other short chain fatty acids, which have tremendous impacts on the overall um, on, your, on your overall body, frankly. So it's it's one of those things where uh, the it's more interesting to look at the absence of this, like what happens if you don't have SCFAs mm-hmm. and all these things, and that's where you begin to create these chronic disease states, these chronic conditions that again can be really tamped down through uh, effective use of, of, or effective composition of the microbiome, which is simply a fancy word for all the things that, the collection of of microbiota that live inside of your, the bacteria that live inside of your gut. There's a lot of words that get thrown around uh, about probiotics. And I think there's, you know, we often talk about prebiotics now, postbiotics is becoming a thing. What's the most important yep. thing for people to understand about pre, post, and probiotics? Yeah, so prebiotics are simply food for probiotics. So think of like a fiber is a great prebiotic. We sell one at Jetson called Gut Prep, which is a, a non-fiber uh, based. Well, it's still fiber, but it's not the traditional fiber based thing. That it just helps. It's that's just the that's just the food for the bacteria. That's mm-hmm. kind of the the first thing. Then postbiotics are a kind of the the. Um, outputs, if you will, of what the, what the probiotics actually, the, their process. So mm-hmm. some people actually want to take postbiotics, but the reality is you can, you, you get those as a result of having pre plus pro that can then Equals generate post. your post. Yeah. 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 It's a simple math equation. It's one plus simple. one equals two. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. What are some myths and misconceptions that you think people have about probiotics? <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> hey, oh my God. I mean, how long do we have here? Uh, uh, it, okay. Some myths. <sighs> okay. That you can get them all through kombucha or you can get them all through yogurt or Jamie Lee Curtis will give them to you in Activia. Um, <laughs> that's in fact, we, we've done certain customer surveys, no, actually non, we've done general population surveys. And, uh, if you look at these surveys, like two, almost two thirds of the U S population thinks to take a probiotic every day, I'm like that you don't, I know you don't, there's no, it would be a much bigger market if that were the case. So there's a misconception that people think I can get everything I need from a yogurt or from a kombucha or from a kimchi, all of which frankly are very good. Like kombucha can be very sugary. So, eh. Kimchi mm-hmm. really has no downsides. Kimchi's great. Um, yogurt is full of dairy, obviously, and and in many cases full of sugar, which is a huge gut destroyer as well. Mm-hmm. But that's the first misconception. I'm getting I'm getting all that I need from these things. The reality is you're getting something for sure, but you don't know in a given cup of yogurt or in kimchi or in kombucha or any kind of other fermented food like that, the the, the kind of strains you're getting, the quantity of strains you're getting. 
these are all important because let me tell you something. If you're looking at a probiotic on the shelf, for example, a lot of them will say they have lactobacillus acidophilus. That's a very common, you know, probiotic. Um, and that's great. And everyone's like, great, I've got my, my lactoacidophilus, which is awesome. The problem is a strain that, that, that's, that, that's, a, that's a species, it's not a strain. You have to be very mm -hmm. specific because even within a species, there are many different strains in that species. And each species has a different impact on the body. So mm -hmm. lacto NCFM versus lacto LA14 are they're the same. They're, they're both lactobacillus acidophilus, but they're different strains. And they have the, the studies show dramatically different results on things like immune function between those two. So that's that's a big misconception. A, I'm getting a lot for my food, and B, I can buy it at CVS for ten bucks, and and I'm getting lacto I'm, I'm getting lacto acid, so that's that's good enough. That's just not true. It's just not the way it works. Yeah, my husband had to take an antibiotic and he came home with a $10 bottle of probiotics. And I was like, throw that away. I'm going to Sprouts. I'll get you probiotics. It, it reminds me of um, champagne. You know, this is, and this is the thing. So I was talking to a buddy of mine who's big into, into wine and, and champagne generally. And he basically said, you can't buy a real bottle of champagne for less than 25 bucks. Barbara put something like that. You can buy sparkling wine, but you can't buy it because champagne has to come from one particular region of France, right? It's the champagne region of France. If it doesn't come from there, it can't be called legally called, can't be called champagne. And the reality is there's constrained land and constrained supply. And so like you just can't get the juice in a bottle for less than 12 bucks, whatever the number is, and the margin of shipping. You can't buy less than 25 bucks. It's kind of the same thing with probiotics. Like you can certainly go buy a, a jar of ProBees for $10 at CVS. No question about it. But they're not really probiotics. I mean, mm. they are, but they aren't going to do shit. Mm -hmm. They're just garbage. They're probably dead. They're probably generic. They're probably some random strain. Uh, it's just not going to be efficacious. You might as well just go eat talcum powder, it's, you know, or go, go eat powdered sugar. It's more fun. <laughs> so how can an average <laughs> consumer then know? You know, something I always say is don't just fall for one billion strains on the label. Because Doesn't then matter. you flip it over and there's only two kinds of bacteria in there and you Doesn't need matter. a diverse microbiome. So what do average consumers yeah. do to see through this? Well, A, don't fall for the whole CFU trick to your point, like the whole 1 billion CFU, 2 billion mm -hmm. CFUs. We've got we've gotten to the whole CFU wars in the in this space. So you'll see ones with 50 billion, 100 billion CFUs. It doesn't it doesn't matter. Like it, it's it, it's it's about the types of strains that are in there. It's how those strains actually coexist because some strains are actually more uh, aggressive than others. And so you may have two strains in a pill that goes in your gut, and one of the strains is wiped out by the other strain, for example. Mm -hmm. So there's a bunch of work you have to do there as well. Um, so don't fall for that. Like don't, the CFU wars, complete horseshit. It's a way for for brands to put you know uh, big numbers in their bottles because people in this country and around the world think of big numbers as better. Uh, so look at to your point. Look at look at the back of the bottle. Look at the back of the package. Look online. Look at the number of strains they have in the particular formulation. So a culturel has one strain, one strain, and it's thirty five years old. I don't know about you, but I don't know why I still use it. Still in my life, which is 35 years old and I'm still happy with my cell phone mm -hmm. certainly isn't. So that's, that's crazy to me. So look at the diversity of strains in the package and look at very important thing, make sure every single strain has a number after it or some mm -hmm. designation. If you just see L dot acid off, let's tell you see, don't just throw it away. It doesn't matter. Zero impact. Make sure it's a named strain like NCFM or LA 14 or BS 11 or all these different types. There's gotta be a strain after that. So that's the that second thing. Third thing is make sure it's fresh. These are living organisms. Like they will die off over time. So if you're going to a, a store like a CVS and buying it off the shelf, you don't know how long it's been there. You don't know how long it was sitting in a warehouse. You don't know if it was 100 degrees in the warehouse or in the summertime. All these things matter. It mm. just matters. And mm -hmm. so uh, that's a that's a, a big challenge that folks just forget that there is a um, there's a shelf life in these things. And it's real because they will die. And so that's important too. So what about refrigeration? Because I know Jetson's probiotics aren't refrigerated, but like you were saying, it does matter um, where they're stored and the heat that they're yeah. exposed to. So kind of talk to me about that a little bit. It, it's always best to have them in a fridge. But we actually have run extensive testing on our formulations and we've actually put them in a we put them in an accelerated heat test. So it was a it was, I think it was, was it 14 days? It was 14 days. 
at, at 70% humidity and 100 degrees to kind of see what happens. And luckily, not luckily, we designed this way, but luckily <laughs> my design worked, uh, that, that they actually maintain over label claim um, even after that crazy. And we did that mostly to make sure that we could ship them appropriately and make sure they got to the houses appropriately. Mm. Uh, but that, that's that. But generally, generally keeping them below 75 degrees is a good best practice. Fridge, not as required, and especially ours at Jetson at least, we make ours literally maybe two weeks before you get them. So there's mm. just not a lot of time for them to go bad because we're making them in small batches, we're making them real time, we're adapting science every quarter. So our pills, unlike anyone else's out there, they they just they can't be more than three months old because we switch formulations every three months. So we just we just finished our um that's not true actually. We we are starting production on our fall line in about a month. Is that right? Where are we at in August? Yeah. Yeah. So in about a month we'll actually start that production. It takes a couple weeks to build them and then we start shipping them out. So like we ours just can't be old because we make them real time. Hmm. So it's fun fun. So then how do people know what strains they need? Do I mean that is so complicated. So should they rely on finding quality products like Jets and probiotics that are already creating um, formulations specific to conditions? Like I know Jetsons has a skin yeah. formulation, yeah. which I want to talk a little bit about. But what are your suggestions for consumers knowing what bacterial strains they actually need this is the problem the science here frankly isn't good enough like there's no, there's no way an average consumer even a very sophisticated consumer can know what strains they need because there are probably a thousand different strains in your gut already there's so many right so part of this there's a bunch of overhype in this industry even if you're taking a 20 strain product for example you're talking that's a tiny fraction of what already exists in your belly right mm -hmm. so that's the first thing so all you can really do right now with the science that's available because we haven't done no one's done large scale huge clinical trials on a particular bacteria. Nobody knows the precise beginning conditions of your gut as an individual. So there's, there's, I would love people to say we can, we are sophisticated enough in the world to be able to look at your gut, type your gut, figure out what you're missing and augment that with a particular personalized pro B. We're not there yet. I'm not sure we'll get there in the next 10 years, even it's just not going to happen. So the best you can do right now is what I think what we've done at Jetson is say, look, we look at the we have access and we look at with through our gut council who's an amazing uh, collection of researchers and myself and our product people as well we read every single new study that comes out on on on, on all the various sites like pubmed for example and we look at what are being clinically trialed what can what what strains are being clinically trialed for particular conditions and we mm -hmm. see a strain that's interesting to us that actually has a good n value a good p value understands kind of all these things that, that look appropriate We'll go to our, our suppliers and say, I need this strain. And we'll put them put that into our next formulation if it makes sense given the time of year. So I think the best a consumer can do right now is A, don't believe the personalized probiotics bullshit. It's just what it is, complete and utter bullshit. There's no such thing as personalized. You, 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 you can't make personalized probiotics unless you're literally some person on a bench is making them by hand. You can't do it at scale. It's not possible. So if you see that, mm -hmm. it's a big red flag. It's horseshit. I'm the, really the glad that you said that. It's totally Sorry, worse. you keep going. We'll go back there. Yeah, it doesn't work. It's just, it's just, it's, it's great marketing. It's complete bullshit. Uh, mm -hmm. And anyone says it differently is just lying to you. Mm -hmm. uh, the um, so, so I think the best you can do is kind of what we do, which is basically we create new formulas every single quarter. We're like the fast fashion of pharma, only ones in the world that can do this. Look at the science, look at the needs states of people, and then we build a product to to make that make that happen every quarter it's crazy like we, we have to do new products every every we, we finish a product and we're on to the next one and we have to figure out what to do with it and make it and get strains from italy and japan and korea and the us and put them all together in cold storage and it, it's i don't know how we do this sometimes it's crazy to me but that's what we do <laughs> Yeah, but I am so yeah. glad that you said that about, you know, the marketing of things being completely personalized to you based off of a seven question quiz. <laughs> it's well, forget the quiz. People will actually send you a gut health kit, right? And you'll you'll take your poop and you'll culture it and send it in. And it's it, I just did one recently again, so I was curious. It's interesting. That's fine. It's good. But then to say we're gonna build you a custom probiotic, it's just a lie. You yeah. can't do it. 
it just reaches so far by- beyond that at this point. Like, I think when something becomes a trend, everyone tries to jump on the bandwagon, oh, yeah. right? So now yeah. there's personalized hair care. So just so you know, your scalp has a microbiome of its own. So by oh, answering yeah, seven, eight questions, yeah. Yeah, yeah, you're not going to be able to get this like crazy personalized hair care, skin care um, that is perfectly curated for your biome wherever it is no it's way. Just not possible but so. even if here's the thing even if you could get high resolution data on your scalp or high resolution data on your on your on your gut the science simply not science the manufacturing capabilities simply don't exist at any kind of scale to then personalize a, a supplement or a probiotic or a shampoo that would that would find that would fill the gaps it just to make a single probiotic pill, you should see what we have to do. Like it is mind blowing how because you can't you can't have cross contamination. You, you don't want to have if you if you're doing a, a multi pill run, you have to clean. It's eight hours between runs just to clean the rooms to make sure we don't cross contaminate mm. our our various SKUs. So there's no universe where at any kind of scale could 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 you say okay, Lauren, you need this lacto, this bifido, this strap, all all the various strains. And custom make that into a pill to a thirty day supply. It'll cost twenty thousand dollars per per yeah. pill or per 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 box. So it's whenever you see that, I'm like, okay, all you're doing is you've got a set of products you you've got, and when you say you're personalizing it, you're just basically taking products up that you have and assembling them in a kit and setting them out. There's just no such thing as a hand built probiotic unless you're spending forty grand a month on it. Well, your operation sounds pretty fascinating. It's pretty cool. It's pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah. I want to dig into some of those um, specific formulations that you have. But before we get there, I'm just curious, what is the frequency people should be taking probiotics? Do they really need to be taking them every day for the rest of their life? Or is there certain stages in life that it's more important? And is there a wrong way? to take probiotics? Uh, good question. So first thing, frequency, yeah, pretty much daily. I mean, you can skip a day or two here and there, but most probiotics aren't resident. They're transient. They don't. Most mm-hmm. of them don't really have aggressively colonize. So you do need to be taking every single day or at least pretty regularly. Um, are there times during which you need additional supplementation? Uh, yeah, I mean, certainly, um, certainly as you age, their microbiome becomes less diverse. So the older you get, the more you need the stuff. The younger you are, the the less uh, the, the less that's, that's that's required. But still, unless you're very very young, if you're a child, especially if you're born by a C-section, your microbiome actually is mm-hmm. is highly um, less diverse. That's a bad phrase, but it's less diverse than if you were born uh, by a vaginal canal. So that's important as well. Um, but yeah, that generally it's one of those things you you will take uh, for the rest of your life, which is okay. So is there any wrong way to take it? Like, is oh, there wrong way. anything Sorry, wrong that... Way. No, that's okay. Uh, the is only there thing anything... I'd say, yeah, the only, generally, generally, this is a high, big generalization. Ours don't suffer from this problem a lot, but others do. You want to avoid taking it after you've eaten a bunch of food, because what happens is your stomach actually secretes a bunch of acid to start breaking down the food. And depending on the way the pill is constructed and what kind of pill it is, that can actually um, degrade the pill more quickly in the stomach. Which then, once the once the bacteria are in the stomach acid, they just die. You, you need the pill to make it down to the intestines and the gut area. And so, if you eat, if you take a pill that isn't properly put together or has a poor uh, a poor pill coating around it, um, after you eat, that could be a problem. So, generally, I recommend taking it in the morning before you eat uh, to let it have a chance to kind of get through into your gut before you start eating a lot of food. That's but a great tip. That's that's a, that's the best way to do it. So there are a couple products. We've already talked about a few of them, gut recovery, gut prep, but you also have a probiotic for skin that has something called solar plast in it. And I've never heard of this. So I was a little curious to learn more. I think we're the first one actually out there to have it. It's it's actually as fascinating um, spinach, organic spinach derived compound that is a superbly efficient antioxidants. That's a good thing about that way. Basically, it's just a thing that neutralizes free radicals in your body. Free radicals are things that get spun off from a variety of different, different, you know, whether it's too much sun exposure or poor eating or whatever it might be. They're just basically um, things you don't want floating in your body. And so solar plast actually is one of the most highly efficacious 
uh, free radical neutralizers out there. It's an antioxidant that does that. So very, very cool, has good clinicals around uh, inflammation reduction, which of course can manifest in the skin quite, quite quite aggressively. And so that's a pretty cool one. I would highly recommend people to check it out. I think we're the first ones in the world to use it. Um, it makes it, it makes the pills a cool green color too. So there you go. I was very intrigued <laughs> by that. You also have yeah. seasonal probiotics, I saw, yeah. which, so should people be switching up their probiotics by the seasons and how would that work? Because the seasons we have in Phoenix are different than the seasons that they have in New York. Yeah, absolutely right. And that's why, so yes, to answer your question, we do have seasonal probiotics uh, and we rotate them every every quarter based on the season. But you're right, people have told us in Florida and Phoenix, like I don't really want whatever um, uh, immunity because I live in, I'm, I'm outside all year round. I don't really get sick in the winter time. doesn't apply to me. Those folks mm -hmm. actually stick on, maybe, maybe they stick on fit for half the year and then stick on skin for half the year. So we, we do rotate them through automatically. If you're a subscriber to Jetson, you simply just get that season's product. But if you're, in, if you are a person who just loves mood or loves immunity or loves fit or loves skin, whatever it might be, or loves outdoor, um, you can actually stick on that. We encourage you to rotate them. It's, you don't need to do it every quarter. You can do six months at a time. Uh, generally, you want to create the diversity of bacteria in your gut. And to do that, you need rotation. Got it. This is so cool. I just love it. There's just so much to know about gut and bacteria. And I could probably ask you questions for three more hours. But I probably the, will. <laughs> before we get to the quick hit questions, because this is becoming such a popular thing and I hate it, I need to know what your opinion is on these gummies that are coming out, these probiotic gummies, collagen gummies. There's a gummy for everything oh these my. days. Uh, <laughs> gummies. <laughs> a, mostly full, mostly just sugary crap is the first thing. And there are a few that are good, but most of them are just sugary crap. B, gummies, you can you can only have a certain type of probiotic in there because, again, probies are living things. And to do a gummy requires a particular compound and heat and everything else. So you can't have live probies in there. They just die. So you're, you're getting a very basic type of a spore-based probiotic. Quite good. But not you will you'll never get vast diversity in a gummy, just not possible. Um, collagen gummies, collagen generally dumbest thing I've heard in my entire life. To be honest, like collagen is a protein; it hits your gut, it gets it gets it gets digested like any other protein. You're not gonna there's no universe where the collagen in a pill somehow makes your skin better. Mm -hmm. it, it, dumbest thing I've heard ever in my entire life. Uh, <laughs> so I don't know who or why we still take collagen. It's just, idiotic um uh, but there you Thank go so you. makes a lot of money on that deal yeah it doesn't make no sense it's just again this is like guys this is like oh my gosh but you know a lot of money to be made in selling shit so uh yeah generally i'd say avoid gummies they're usually sugary they aren't gonna be diverse probiotic wise collagen's a bunch of bullshit and uh you can get higher density you have to take like six gummies to get the equivalent density of one little pill it just doesn't make any sense like take the damn yep. pill and stop complaining there's this uh, video making the rounds of them like making the gummy and each layer is a different strain or different vitamin. And I'm like, this is such a Oh, yeah. No, I know the one out of, out of the UK. That's actually interesting. I bought some. It's interesting, but um, just unnecessary. Like just it doesn't just unnecessary. It's just unnecessary. But there are some good ones like Llama Naturals out there for kids. Um, they do a really nice job on their gummies. They're beautifully all fruit based really well done they are they're they're, I, they're like candy they're delicious two really good guys who, who build a company very very good but generally i would say avoid gummies well uh let's wrap this up by sharing with the listeners how they can get in touch with you how they can get in touch with jetson probiotics and get their hands on some product uh oh Sure. Give us all the Pretty links. easy. Like uh, to, for Jetson, just go to wearejetson.com or just in your favorite search engine. Just look for Jetson Probiotics. Either way, uh, we'll, we'll get you there. There's always some some decent promo codes hanging out there if your listeners are value conscious, which I encourage you to be to give it a shot. Uh, for me, you know, I am mostly I mostly do my work through Jetson these days. So if you if you want, I, every Friday a mail goes out. It's actually written by me still. I don't know why or how I still do this, but I do. Uh, and I can contains like a round above the most recent links and <laughs> studies and science were all done in a hopefully fun way to read. So you're not bored by reading, you know, endless studies, but uh, so that's, yeah. that's something you can, you can find me on Twitter. I don't really do it much anymore. It's just life is too short these days for my, for my, for me, at least for, uh, for social media. So I'm kind of off all that these days. 
I know. It's such a struggle between trying to create a brand and get it mm-hmm. out there and create this awareness I and also it. living these more mindful lives and trying to put I, your phones down. I know. I just found it like a, you enter like a slew of despond the second you get on social media. So I'm like, you know what? I think I'm done. So there you go. Well, I've got three quick hit questions for you before I let you go. All right. First one. What does it mean to you to have a clean body? Oh my gosh. Uh, hold on. This is a quick hit. Oh my gosh. Uh, <laughs> uh, you know, to me, a clean body is one that lives the way the body was designed to live, which means that like, you, you shouldn't have to put a bunch of inputs to counteract the effects of, of bad things you're doing to your body. So like, if you just mm. kind of eat the way we're supposed to eat as human beings and drink, we're supposed to drink and and move how we're supposed to move uh, and sleep how we're supposed to sleep like that to me is and that 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 obviates the need to supplement yourself a bunch of stuff and that's 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 to me is a clean body yeah get back to the basics second one it's so simple out of three i know you already mentioned quite a few during uh this conversation but what are some brands that you currently love and support yeah I'm a big fan of, uh, like I said, Vega is always a super, super clean, high quality brand. Uh, uh, Kachava, another one I like a lot. It's a, it's a morning drink or whatever. It's like a, a shake, but it's delicious and really well put together and great superfoods. If you're looking for like really great, quick and dirty hacks, I mean, one, this is bizarre, but for, for sometimes when you're busy and you're at work and you can't even make a good salad in the morning, uh, like a brand called Saffron Road. Mm. makes really nice quality frozen uh, entrees for example but they're just really well done there's not a single there's not a single ingredient you can't pronounce or name or recognize in these in these frozen products which is really unusual for a frozen product yeah but they're delicious and they're non gm but like the chicken i have chicken pad thai because again we're moving so like there's no stove or anything uh so chicken pad thai cage free antibiotic free chicken and then literally a bunch of ingredients that you just recognize i could make this in my in my kitchen you know, oh my so gosh, I know a good, good hack for a frozen. Yeah, it's I'm not gonna common at all. Right. Pick that up. Uh, very, very impressive. Uh, those are probably like my, those are three other good hacks right now that I'm a big fan of. Those are great ones. Yeah. And last one, we didn't talk too much about stress, but trying to live a stress free as much as you can life is all a part of the interconnectedness of achieving Huge. health. So what are some habits you have to cultivate a more mindful, stress-free life. Yeah, martinis. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> sort of. Uh, no, I mean, <laughs> once in a while. No, I think first thing is stop reading the news. It, it, and I know it's I know it's crazy, uh, but stop listening to the news. Stop mm-hmm. engaging the news. You know, news is designed for one reason to get you to engage, and it's not true. But the news is nobody prints good news. Mm-hmm. Nobody wants to see in the paper tomorrow. Neighbors lost cat found. That's not what people are, that, that you're not going to get clicks or views on that. So news, um, almost necessarily for business model, has to create things that are dramatic mm-hmm. or has to report things that are dramatic. And so you just find, a, uh, I, I find in this well-researched phenomenon, actually those who, who stop engaging in the news on a regular basis uh, are much happier than, uh, than, than those who, who are news junkies. Trust me, if something big happens, you're going to hear about it. Mm-hmm. I, I guarantee you, right? You can't escape it. So that's one thing. Second thing is spend even just 20 minutes a day outside. That's the biggest. That, not biggest that, that's a big one. Again, a great study out of uh, I think University of Kent over in the UK showed that just being out, just being outside, not exercising, not doing heavy cardio, not doing burpees, just being outside. Uh, reduces stress by it was, in, it was in the 30-ish percent range just walking for 20 minutes a day just do that yeah. uh, you'll be shocked at, at what that does for your body so those are my my two stress tips watch avoid the news if you can and, and uh, get outside I plan to get my 20 minutes after this recording. I'm going to take my book book into the backyard. I don't currently have furniture in my backyard, so I'll be leaving, uh, laying on my diving board. My neighbors probably think I'm pretty strange. (laughs) That's all I've got. You you and everybody else, because, you know, there's a massive shortage of outdoor furniture right now, thanks to COVID and the supply chain disruption. So we, we, we were selling our last house. We sold all the furniture because it wasn't going to go in the new place. And, now my wife is like, we have nowhere to sit outside. I'm like, no, oh, order some new stuff. She goes, I can't. It's all backward for months. I'm like, well, 
There you go. Blankets. This is what we call a first world problem. Yep. Blankets on the grass. <laughs> it's great. <laughs> it's exactly. a great solution. It's good to be good to be grounded on the ground anyway. It's good for your body to be on the ground. Yeah. Well, thank you so much. This was seriously such a great conversation. I don't know if you saw oh, my so Instagram nice already, you. but I was geeking out over this awesome conversation. <laughs> so I'm really excited to get this published and to support Jetson Probiotics. And yeah, You're thank so you so kind. much. Let us know. Hit us on Instagram. Let us know how we're doing. Love to, uh, love to get feedback from our customers. So do so. Hi, everyone. I hope you enjoyed that interview. As a reminder, this podcast is for educational purposes only. It is not a substitute for professional care from a doctor or otherwise qualified health professional. This podcast is provided on the understanding that it is not a replacement for medical or other health-related services. If you're looking for help in your journey, seek out a qualified practitioner. We'll see you next time.